All right, guys, um, we are going to move on to Jeremiah 33. Um, and let's open in prayer. Lord God, we worship your name. We thank you. We adore you. And we honor you. I ask right now, God, that you would come here in our midst, speak through me, help me to say your words alone. I pray that you would touch our hearts and our minds to receive what you have and that you would speak to us individually, Lord God, that people would be helped and drawn closer to you. We give you all the glory and honor and praise. You alone are far worthy than we could ever say. We love you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Jeremiah 33. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah a second time while he was shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker of it, the Lord that formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you don't know. Man, what an invitation for God to come and say, call to me. Let me show you some things that you don't know. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of this city and the houses of the kings of Judah, which are thrown down by the mounts and by the sword. So God's talking about the whole city, all the palaces, their grandiose buildings that are just laying in ruins that they thought would never fall. Because um, Jerusalem is situated on a high hill and it's hard to get up to it to, to fight against it. It had an upper hand a little bit in that respect, but people get too prideful and think it was impenetrable. And it's very dangerous when we're at a place where we think we can either keep getting away with things or, you know, um, we don't need God or, you know, we just get full of pride and rely upon ourselves. Um, that's always a dangerous spot. Verse four, for thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel concerning the I'm sorry, I read that concerning the houses of the city, concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, which are thrown down by the mounts and by the sword. They come to fight with the Chaldeans, but it is to fill them with the dead bodies of men whom I have killed in my anger and in my fury and for all whose wickedness I have hid my face from this city. So God is saying, if you choose to rebel against me, remember God told them to submit and surrender to the Babylonians and then they would be okay. And God said, if you choose to fight, it will be for your dead body because you are not going to win against them because I have ordained them to come and take you back to Babylon. And so sometimes we can be in our stubbornness and fight and rebel and have it our way, but you're going to get the whole mess that comes along with having it your way. And God will not be mocked. He said that he hid his face from that city. He's not paying attention to it anymore. Verse 6, Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them and will reveal to them the abundance of, of peace and truth. That's what happens when you obey God. He comes to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. When you repent and you turn to him, he will come, bring healing and health and give you abundance of peace and truth. Who wouldn't want that? Hallelujah. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return and will build them as at the first. So what I did before, if you come back to me, I will do it again. And that is crazy 
That is crazy grace. When someone has offered you something so precious and expensive and rare out of the kindness of their heart, and you take that and demolish it and destroy it over and over and over and over and over till it's left crumbled, broken, nasty, in ruins, then you would rightfully say, well, forget you. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm done with this and move on. But God takes that broken piece, all those crumbles and puts it back together all brand new and gives it back to you again. <laughs> He's given them a whole other chance. That's insane. Verse seven, or that was what we read, verse eight. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. God's going to take the mess that you made of your life and clean it all up, make it all better. So it's clean and better and brand new. That is crazy. Verse 9. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and an honor before all nations of the earth that will hear all the good that I do to them. And they will fear and tremble for all the goodness and all the prosperity that I give to it. So God is doing this insane goodness and mercy and grace and second and third and fourth and 500 million chances and redemption for these people. Not only so maybe they might think within themselves, hey, he really does love me. Maybe I shouldn't be acting like this. Maybe I should listen. And just follow after him. He really cares about me. And then you come and repent and change. And not only for that, but then other people around that aren't even serving God will look and say, dang, look what he did in their life. That's the kind of God that I would want to have. And that's how he makes a name for himself. Hallelujah. Verse 10 Thus saith the Lord, again, there shall be heard in this place that you say will be desolate with no one living there, with no animals, even in the cities of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man, without inhabitant, without beast. In this very empty, desolate place, you will hear the voice of joy one day. Hallelujah. The voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, praise the Lord of hosts for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. And I lost my spot. And of them that shall Bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, for I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. I'm going to take you all back to the beginning. That's what people say, oh, if I could just start over. <laughs> Good news. Good news. You can always start over with Jesus. Clean slate. Like nothing ever can you imagine that? You are not going to find that opportunity anywhere else in all existence. Man, like nothing ever happened. Wow. Verse 12, thus saith the Lord of hosts again in this place that is desolate without man, 
without beast and all the cities of it will be a habitation of shepherds causing their flocks to lie down. Hallelujah. It's going to all go back to normal. All go back to the way you remember it, it was. In the city of the mountains, in the cities of the valley, in the cities of the south, in the land of Benjamin, and in the places all around Jerusalem, in the cities of Judah, shall the flocks pass again under the hands of them that count them, saith the Lord. The shepherds, it says, tell them or, or count them. They would count, they would pass through under their hand and they, they would count the sheep. God said, it's going to go back to everything that you knew. Hallelujah. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing that I have promised to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time will I cause a branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he will execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. We talked about that. That was uh, spoken in another earlier chapter in Jeremiah, that prophecy of the coming Messiah. Hallelujah. For thus saith the Lord David, I'm sorry, for thus saith the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of Israel. Neither shall the priests and the Levites lack a man before me to offer burnt offerings and burn meat offerings and do sacrifices continually. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah saying, Thus saith the Lord, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, that there should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant, that he should not have a son or a descendant to reign on my throne, and with the Levites, the priests, my ministers. So God is saying, when day and night stop, that's when my covenant with David will stop. It ain't stopped yet. Hallelujah. God is so faithful to everything that he promises. Hallelujah. That it never runs out. And he doesn't forget. Hallelujah. What God has promised you, even if it's been a long time, and sometimes you can think like, man, he just, well, God's clock is broke. <laughs> I used to make jokes. I still do sometimes just to have fun out at home. But that's what I'm going to get you, um, you know, I'm going to buy you a gift. I'm going to get you a, a new clock. <laughs> Your clock's broke. But it isn't. And we can say that, you know, we can feel forsaken, you know. And especially when we're in a situation where we're waiting on promises and we see all these other people getting what we're waiting for and half of them don't even deserve it and wouldn't even treat it right, that can get very difficult. But, and it's hard, you know, and sometimes people talk about God's timing and you just want to hit them, <laughs> you know. Um, it's his timing, not yours. Thanks for the help, pal. <laughs> um but it is a thing of waiting and, you know, we have to get to that place where we just surrender the timing and that is the most suckiest thing in all existence. Surrendering timing is awful because we just need this and not, it's not only like I want it and I want it now like a microwave cheap thing. Sometimes it's serious matters, serious, serious matters. And it's like, we need this. We need you to move, and um, it can it can be so hard. And um, I just want to encourage you to keep waiting. That God has not forgotten you. That He has not forsaken you, even though it may have been a long time. Um, there are some things that I've been waiting on God for um, since I was a little child. And some other things, maybe not as long, but over a decade. And um, so it can be very difficult. 
And um, it's just heart-wrenching things and you're just devastated and at a loss. You don't even know what to do anymore sometimes. And it's in those moments where you have to choose. It really, really, really is a choice. You have to say, do you know what? I'm going to choose to trust God. I'm going to choose to not get sideways. I'm going to choose to believe that God is doing things behind the scene that I cannot see. I'm not going to align myself with the devil and accuse you. I'm just going to believe that you're working this out for my good and you're working on this for me. And sometimes, even recently, I've prayed something else um, maybe would help you. I'd say, okay, God, you, you get overwhelmed with everything and you're like, okay, I can't do this. I can't carry this. I, I, I can't possibly do this anymore. So can you please change me? change me and make me the woman that can make me the woman that can do your will that can do what you're calling me to do hallelujah he is so faithful verse 22 as the host of heaven cannot be counted neither the sand of the sea measured. So will I multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister to me. Hallelujah. Wow. That's a lot of people. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, Con do not consider what these people have spoken. Don't, don't pay attention to what they're saying. That will preach right there. End of sermon. Thank you for coming. <laughs> don't pay attention to what people are saying. When they say the two families that the Lord has chosen, meaning Jacob and Israel, he has even cast them off. This is being done in a tone of he has cast them off forever. They are never coming back. Thus have they despised my people that they should no more be a nation before them. So God is saying they just want this whole thing ruined and trampled down so that it won't be what it was before. But I'm making it what it was before. So don't listen to what other people are saying. You listen to me, God is telling him. Verse 25, thus saith the Lord, if my covenant is not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. Hallelujah. I love these things about God because, you know, we've seen this in here where Jeremiah is coming and he's got like all these different worries, you know, and he's like, I'm looking at, you know, we, in the previous chapter, he was saying like, there's this stuff going on and like, it doesn't make sense to me. And I'm looking around and I, you promised that we would come back. But from what I see, we ain't coming back from this. <laughs> Um, this is this is way too much. And it's so awesome that God didn't come to him beating him. Like, do you think I'm a lying? Or, you know, like some people do that. They come to you, you have like doubt or wonder or concern and, and you don't know. And so then they beat you for like questioning God or, you know, having a moment of doubt or just struggling with something. And it's so amazing that these times happened in scripture and God never responded that way. And he came to him and he was just repeating and repeating. And we're like, I'm going to beat this promise into you until you get it. I'm going to just keep saying it and keep saying it and keep saying it until it rings into your head and you don't listen 
to the people around you. You listen to me. And I pray going forward, hallelujah, that you will cling to the promises that God gave you. It doesn't matter who believes you or not. When God has given you promises, listen, don't go and count on the reaction of people to confirm it. You believe God. Not everyone's going to believe with you. And that's an unfortunate truth. But you believe God. Don't listen to other people, Abraham and Sarah. Take matters into your own hands and all this other stuff. Don't do that. You trust God and believe him because he is not a man that he should lie. He's going to keep his word to you and his promises. May you be blessed. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.